Okay, so tasks. Um, the, the message on tasks is, is pretty similar to manipulative, is that uh, tasks are really critical, but like with the resources, it's, it's actually the, the, the use of them that is particularly important. So I'm just going to read exactly what it says. Tasks are critical to the learning of mathematics because they largely define what happens there. However, the evidence suggests the choice of one particular task or resource over another is less important than the way teachers set about using them in the classroom. So for those of us that are you know, supporting teachers or planning or writing schemes of work or whatever it is, that in itself is not, is not sufficient. And the providing experiences for our staff within the school to work on tasks together to see what we would pull out and expose with tasks is critical um, freshman development message. Yes, Pete? That's yeah. correctly yeah. positioned. Yeah. Okay, I'm not, we're at a time, I'm not going to talk through um, this example, mainly because it's exposed very clearly in the um, presentation as a task that um, helps and uh, supports generalisation about how adding um, consecutive odd numbers gives a square number um, at the time. So that's really clearly laid out there. Um, so in the interest of time, I'm not going to go through that one. So this idea that um, if I add um, the first three odd numbers are the my, my total is three square numbers. Eleven odd numbers um, my total um, is eleven square. But uh, I think one of the critical things I got from sitting the panel is, is is seeing a pattern is not the same as uh, as as understanding the underlying structure. Pattern and structure are related but different. Um, and um, some of the use of tasks in the hands of less experienced teachers may possibly allow children to spot patterns, but not define and pin down the structures that underpin those patterns. Um, so the one that I am going to pick up on because, um, oh, there we go, is, sorry, what's it clicking? Is the next one. So this idea about um, examples and, and non-examples and uh, any of you that have been involved with kind of much mastery work via NCTF, they might well come across or the concept and non-concept is what I've heard it called as well. Um, so here's an example of a task. Um, helping children to um, um, refine their um, definition of a rhombus. Um, so um, the way the task described in here by Jeremy is um, the idea of concept and non-concept. So we're not just going to look at what rhombuses are, but some shapes that we might say that are rhombuses that aren't in fact rhombuses. Um, uh, and some shapes that we might say are not rhombuses, which are in fact um, rhombuses. So I think there's ones included in both those categories on there. Um, so, um, again, these are all kind of things you could use for professional development in school. This is kind of defined in here how the teacher used it. So, started by looking at the um, six shapes on the board, six quadrilaterals, and asked children to vote whether they thought they were um, a rhombus or not. Um, and she looked at the first two pairs, but, sorry, the first pair um, of um, the rhombus, the first and second one, and, um, and told the children, in fact, the first one wasn't a rhombus, but the second one was. Um, and then asked the children if any of them wanted to reconsider their votes for the remaining four, four shapes um, as they started to understand um, a little bit more about the characteristic of rhombus. Um, so then they looked at the third and the fourth shape, um, uh, both quadrilaterals again, um, and the teacher said them right, on, on these ones the, um, the left hand shape is a rhombus but the right hand shape is not a rhombus, um, and so they talked about those, and then asked the children if they wanted to um, refine, their, um, the, refine their votes for the final two shapes. Um, so, uh, my question to you is, what do you think the children said about the final two shapes? Uh, were they rhombuses, were they not rhombuses? Um, to talk to the person next to you about that. Okay, so um, predictions for what the children, what common answers for the last two shapes. Yeah. Go on, go on. So just shout it out loud because I don't think everyone heard that and why you think. The left one is and the right one isn't. Yep. 
Yeah, a nice mathematical term there. <laughs> Yeah, the slant. Yeah, about. but you're right. But you're right. Yeah, absolutely. We talk about the slantiness of the lines, and that one's a bit more slanty. And then the white ones are square, and it's a square. And that's it. Yeah. 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 Right. So. Um, yeah. And so the. Um, I mean, the, the teacher then led into um, the definition of a rhombus. It's a, a quadrilateral with four equal sides, and so by definition, they're also going to be parallel. Um, and. Um, and that a, a square is a, a special case of a rhombus because um, all of the side, all of the angles are right angles within that. Um, but even though, so I mean, a couple of interesting things there. Even though they're they're both squares, the idea that one identifies a rhombus and a square is not a rhombus, but that is a rhombus, not a square, because it's slanted on the side. So the, the the kind of message there is, we could say to uh, less experienced teachers, I guess, that we're working with, or when we're learning about a shape or learning about a particular category, let's look at lots of different examples. Um, but the teacher that's put these together has very specifically known what she wanted to elicit in the examples or what he wants to elicit in the examples. They've not just put some random pictures that may or may not be wrong up. They know that the, the, there's going to be issues around, is it slanty, the left-hand one? They try and think, oh, there are probably some children that might think that's a rhombus because it looks kind of diamondy and slanty. And there'll definitely be some children who think a square isn't a rhombus, so I'm going to put that in there. So again, um, from a professional development point of view, it's the, that specific refining of the task and how it's used that leads to that opportunities for really clear learning, rather than um, just the idea that um, we might say that of showing lots of different shapes that may or not may not be wrong. This is a, 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 is a good idea. Um, I think that's me. The square is wrong. Or I, I would say they probably might not even say it's a square in the first place. Actually, that one. Um, 